by Steve McIntyre. Steve is a former DPL, Debian project leader, and also a Debian developer who's a part of multiple teams in the project, which are um, key teams, very important teams in our project. So Steve, the stage is yours now. Hey, how is everybody this morning? Oh. So, yes, it's awesome to be here in Prisren again. Um, I've trailed this session several times this week, as have other people. I hope it's not a disappointment. And, ah, there we go. So, I'm going to say my usual spiel. This is a boff. I like running boffs because it means I don't have to do all the talking. Um, I want this to be a conversation. I don't have enough material to keep us busy for the full time. Um, I'm going to talk or lay out what I see as the problems we have, options for what we might do to fix them, and then I want you lot to help me work out the right answer. Um, I have a gobby doc, as always. Please, if there are any great insights during the session, if somebody could, could make sure those are jotted down, that would be great. I will do my usual and promise to, at some point after the conference, I will collect everything together and send out a summary email to various mailing lists. It's something I find very useful and important. So, <clears throat> what is the problem with firmware? Well, background. Most hardware needs firmware to work. Um, hardware typically is very, very difficult to drive direct in software. Um, it may only provide very basic functionality. Um, if you want to have a common class of device, you typically, you will have some firmware on it which will expose the features. It might aggregate some, it might do all kinds of other things. It, it will be there to provide basic functionality. Some devices have firmware built in and you don't even know about it. Your keyboard, your mouse, um, disk drives, they all have software built in that we call firmware because then it's not software. Um, you typically don't know about it, you don't have to know about it, but it's there. Some of the firmware is loaded at runtime. So this tends to be for the more complicated devices. Um, Wi-Fi is absolutely the most common. It's common in graphics, some wired network cards. Um, audio is becoming more common. It could be disk controllers, it could be all sorts. Um, the vast majority of this firmware is non-free. We don't like non-free things. <laughs> and that is a problem for Debian. Um, you, uh, hopefully most of the people in this room recognize the thing about priorities. Our priorities are our users and free software. That's not ordered. We, you know, we don't uh, to pretend that one is more important than the other. We care about both deeply. We don't want to be shipping non-free firmware. However, our users need firmware to make their hardware devices work. That's a, I see that as an issue. Um, so for a long time, we've been shipping a non-free section alongside the main Debian archive. We have been shipping as part, or to go for installation, you either have a separate firmware bundle that you can have on a USB stick or something alongside your installation media, or we have what we've been calling for many years unofficial installer and live images that include firmware. I say unofficial, they are in a separate path on our CD image server. Um, we call them unofficial because we don't want, we, we would love people not to have to use them, but they're prepared by the same team. They're prepared using the same software. They're released on the same day. They're signed with the same key. 
that's a it's a very vague meaning of unofficial here. Jonathan. <clears throat> the unofficial part comes from it doesn't meet our standards. That's why it's unofficial. Oh, absolutely. Not, it doesn't matter who prepared it. It doesn't mm. meet the Debian standards. Therefore, it's not an official Debian image. Sure. Um, I, I was a person who, who added the unofficial piece here because I didn't want, it, want them to be in the same place, but it's not great. Um, so this is all a bit of a mess, really, and it's only getting worse. Um, as a quick guide, of the people in the room here, how many of you have a laptop that you can use without loading non-free firmware? One. Two? <laughs> well, well, I have lots yeah. of, all my old laptops become servers at homes, and they sure. don't need any firmware to function like that. So, uh, yeah. as a laptop, I need firmware. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, this, this is the issue. Um, and, of course, again, if you go back and think about it, there is non-free firmware on your system. It's whether or not you have to load it at runtime. Um, it's perfectly possible, or it has been until very recently, to install at least a basic system with wired Ethernet on a lot of common laptops. But that's getting harder and harder. If you want to get wireless, you are basically out of luck. Uh, there are a few free chipsets, but they, they're becoming less and less common in modern machines. Um, this is becoming more of a problem that for a typical end user, the, the official images that we produce and distribute are not actually useful. Um, I don't think that's great. So, one of the things that we have... I, I started a discussion um, about this. I blogged about all of this, about what I'd like to do. Um, Ansgar has been awesome and has already done some work for me. For me, for the project. But for me, obviously, because he loves me. So if I do that, we actually have... <laughs> right now, on... Um, as part, in, supported as part of DAC, we have a firmware non-free section. Um, for those people who haven't seen why that matters, um, at the moment, if you install firmware as part of your installation, so if you add the non-free section to get at firmware, what you end up with, of course, is that firmware. You may also end up, for the rest of time on your machine, installing some non-free software that, without realizing it. Um, that may not seem important to you. It does seem important to me. We, we, as a free software project, do not want to be encouraging people to install non-free. We would like to be showcasing the best that the free software world has, and that's not it. Um, so by adding a new section for non-free firmware only, it, we, this is a step on the road to making that better. So there is no magic with the new, sec, with the new component. Um, what people will need to do, and I've checked, no one's done it yet, is you will need to add non-free firmware slash section um, in your control file for the binary packages. I appreciate that that doesn't actually apply to probably anyone who's here. Is Ben around? I guess not. So probably nobody here actually maintains a package that needs to worry about this. Oh, Gunnar does, of course, okay. Um, so we did briefly consider, should there be extra magic somewhere on FTP master to do filtering here? And then Ansgar I did have a good point of, we don't like special cases, so let's not do a special case. Let's rely on maintainers. There's only a handful of packages that need this anyway. 
So we will need to add support elsewhere. We will need to add it in or anything that knows about the layout of a Debian archive will need to understand that there is a new section, so a new component. Um, it shouldn't take too long, I hope, touch wood. So what else do we want? So I want, so Helmut. Um, brief question, will there be a transition period for users like uh, being able to pull firmware from plain non-free for a while as well as pulling it from non-free firmware? Uh, like duplicating the distribution, uh, the, the packages in two distributions, is that planned? That was a question, it was a, it had been suggested we should do that. I personally am, don't like the idea too much, but I don't feel too strongly. Um, that's something that we we, should, we will need to work out before we release Bookworm. Gunnar. Yeah, given it's a few packages that are affected, uh, well, my plan on this was to, well, to replace the package for a, trans, uh, for a transitional one, uh, for a dependency on a package on, the, on this different suit. Of course, users will, will still have to add the right the non-free firmware component instead of just non-free. But uh, they will be like, I mean, I haven't uh, really implemented anything yet, but they will be at least prompted that their firm firmware now depends on something that's not there. And well, we, we, we will see how to communicate this to users. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So now we have step one. Um, one. Oh. Uh, Sorry, I have a, a quick question. Um, because uh, non-free uh, package uh, are not uh, automatically built by the build D, so I want to know uh, whether non-free firmware will be uh, built on build D. Um, it's slightly more complicated than that. Some non-free packages are auto-built, um, but you have to get. You have to. Um, we have to set things up so that the buildees will build a certain subset. We absolutely expect that the non-free firmware packages will be auto-built um, for the same reasons. Sorry? Ah, yes, they, they get built as they, we expect that they are architectural. We don't actually build any software for, for most of these. They are binary blobs that we are given by upstream, so long as we can distribute them. So, I have enumerated the, poss the possible ways forward. I actually had five options, but um, since I first suggested this, we now have the non-free firmware section, so I've amalgamated two of them. There's no point arguing on that one anymore. Um, we, as I said, we currently have two different sets of installation and live images. Um, I can see that we can carry on like that. We could make it easier to find the non-free images. Um, that is something that we haven't been good at. I, that started off as a deliberate policy. We shouldn't be doing that anymore because we just make it harder for our users. Um, so we could basically make no major technical change here. Or we could stop providing non-free images altogether and go full on Debian is free software, free software is all we do. That's an option. It's not one I prefer because again, that doesn't help our users who need this. We could make the non-free images official and at that point actually push them alongside our normal uh, existing images that don't include firmware. Um, we would need to name them appropriately, label them, um, give users good, gu good guidance as to which one they might need, or do we just de declare that actually firmware is a necessary evil, it's part of what we have to do, and do we just stick it into our official images and just m move to having one set? Or is there something else that I haven't thought of? If you think there's a better answer, please shout at me because I, I, you know, I'm an idiot. I must be. Jonathan. <clears throat> Do you think it's a problem that 
what we call firmware isn't firmware anymore. If you consider um, the AMD graphics firmware or NVIDIA um, firmware, it's a whole operating system complete with not only firmware, but drivers and memory management and file systems and almost anything you'd find in a, in a complete modern operating system these days. Do, 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 you, do you still consider that just firmware and that it's a, just an a well, issue of where it runs? Because Obviously, it's got a lot more complicated than that. Well, of course it has. I mean, but then again, firmware has always been a potentially large blob of all kinds of things that we just didn't know what was in there. We now may have a better idea of what, of, of what might be in there because people have reverse engineered bits or, or people have told us what's in it. I don't think that necessarily that makes that much of a difference. Um, if, whether it was an, you know, a tiny 8K blob that you might upload onto your network card to let it do Pixie, or whether or not it is a 100 megabyte lump of shaders and God knows what that you put onto your graphics card, it is stuff that we have no control over. The hardware vendor provides it. It is necessary in their eyes to make the hardware work, and it doesn't work fully without it. It's, I appreciate it's a, it's a difficult line to draw. The typical line that most people would draw is, does this stuff run on your, on your main CPU or is it running in some other capacity? Is it running on a separate controller? Is it running entirely outside of the operating system's control? I think the, the difference comes in, I think the difference comes in where many people still consider it as just like a, a few kilobytes of initialization string and it's just an issue of where it gets loaded, but it's clearly not that simple anymore, and I, th I think people should just keep that in mind too in making decisions. Sure, it, 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 it's a thing. Um, Christoph. Regarding the choices you are listing there, I think I would kind of prefer option number four, just include stuff. Um, but the installer can still ask the question if uh, people want to use it. So they still have to make their choice, mm. just not at download time where it's way too early. And they can, uh, that would even work in the case where they can try without, or maybe the, 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 uh, the installer can just try without, and if it doesn't work, go back and try with. Thank you for asking exactly the question I was going to move to next. So... These are broad descriptions, um, and that is a key, a key point here. One of the things that we will do if we embed firmware more firmly, oh, sorry, bad pun, is that um, we will make DI more explicit about what it's using firmware for. We will, where possible, ask the user, do you want to use this firmware or not? And list the devices that, that we think need the firmware, explain and maybe give links to, um, you know, to wiki pages or whatever with more information about them so people can read about it afterwards. We would love to encourage people to write free firmware replacements for these things because, of course, we want more free software. That's what we do. It gets slightly more complicated. If you remember, I mentioned earlier that one of the latest um, non-free firmware blobs that we have to worry about is audio on the, modern, um, on the most recent couple of generations of Intel hardware. That is an absolute nightmare for logistical reasons. Imagine you're a blind person and you're trying to drive the installer through audio, you know, through the, the text-to-speech that we have. If you don't load that firmware immediately on first boot, you get no audio. It's difficult to ask people, do you want to, do you want to load the audio firmware without loading the audio firmware? for example. And I know that's a contrived example, but it's one we already have. The other one that is coming is I expect we will have to load graphics firmware on devices that need it soon. If you want to drive, for example, a high DPI display, um, it's, 
this is not going away. If anything, it's going to, only going to become more of a problem. We do want to at least, however, as I said, make it clear to the user which firmware that we have detected and we have started to use so they can, they can learn more about it. Gunnar. Yep. I was thinking, and I'm sorry for bringing this into a probably uh, corner cases that uh, are not th that common, but uh, I, I think we should be explicit and draw a line uh, towards developers uh, on the use of firmware itself. Because, for example, we may find uh, abandoned games from the 8-bit uh, consoles, and they are technically firmware that doesn't run on your main processor, but you can install an arcade machine emulator and then download from Debian hundreds of old games which are not free software and would be run via an emulator. So, I mean, I think that's a case we, we would not like to distribute that. Uh, but, uh, sure. I, but so, I, my argument is that that's not firmware. It is, that is software in it that is designed to run on a, on a machine, even if it's not the machine you're currently on. What we're talking about here, and I want to be focused on this, is we're looking at just the bits of non-free firmware that enable you, the hardware you have in front of you. Anything else, I explicitly want to ignore as a distraction. Thank you for bringing it up. It helps. Uh, yeah, in the last mailing list discussion, Gunnar, there was a discussion of what would that firmware uh, component um, contain, and the initial um, suggestion was all the packages that start with firmware dash and packages that install in lib firmware. So that seems like a very reasonable first step to start off yeah. with, I think. Yeah, I mean, we don't necessarily have everything nailed down on this, but definitely let's not get let that get in the way of useful progress. Thomas. I really like the idea to include the non-free firmware on the official images and then uh, add a question to the installer, do you want, and having the default, yeah, use it or not. But since we, we discuss a lot of corner cases and technical things, we should still keep a focus on the end user. And I would like to have this question do you want to run the installer without non-free firmware that the end user does not see this question at all? Because, uh, so we have this possibility to enter the ex expert mode. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you ask the end user, do you want to run the installer without non-free firmware and still have the information, your Wi-Fi card or your audio may not be working then, we we will get the end user get scary because the end user then has to, to decide and he cannot decide because he does not know, do I need the firmware or not? So it, in my opinion, it would be very good to have the default, yes, run the installer with non-free firmware and don't ask the end user about this. Yeah, thank you. That's a very fair point. Um, so... Where I want to go with this, and I've, you know, and I've made no, no secret of this, um, is I want the project as a whole to make this decision. I am going to take this to a GR. Apologies, I should have had this GR out already. Life got in the way. Sorry, that was me. Um, but, I mean, I'm the person leading the images team. I could have just done this, but I don't think that's right. Um, because this is a real change to some of our core of our core principles, so I want all of Debian, all of the Debian developers, to make this decision. And then equally, it's also we have a shared responsibility for it. Um, I've already had—I won't call it abuse—I've had some strong feedback from people who don't like the idea of us including firmware at all, and I get that totally. You know, we are a free software group. I've been living and breathing free software for you know, nearly 30 years now. This really matters to me too. It, but however, it all comes back to the our users and free software, and that's a, you know, that's a really difficult thing to split. Christoph, you, you had a point. Yeah, I, I totally like the idea of not scaring the users, but I think that this is the only 
place or the single place where we have a chance to tell people that non-free <coughs> software or non-free firmware is going to be run on their systems. Maybe it's just a, um, a matter of wording that message in, in a way that it's not scary. It, the, the, the installer might just display a single pop-up. Uh, your system is running this graphics card. You will need this firmware. We will tell you where you can read after it afterwards later. So, sure. Or we could maybe we could maybe have us have a screen that says, "I have automatically installed this firmware." Um, okay, and an option to say, "Tell me more." Yeah, I, I think it's just a matter of making it not not scary there, because this is the, the only chance we have to talk to people uh, later. It's Thomas wants to say something. You're right, but my impression is, yeah, we care a lot about non-free firmware, but the end user doesn't care at all if he uses non-free firmware or not. He just wants to run Debian on his hardware. So, I, I, well, I to be fair, keep, keep, some keep, of our of our users do care. Some of them don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if we have the focus on the end users, most of them will not care about the technical details and maybe not about freedom or whatever, they want to run Linux. But I think it's a very good idea to, to keep an eye on the wording and not to scare the end user. Yeah. So, we do need to make sure that we spend time on the messaging and how we label images. We should make it clear so people can find afterwards, after they've installed, exactly which non-free things we have included. Um, again, I mean, uh, there's an, a yet another example here. Um, I'll pick on Gunnar again. The Raspberry Pi images. Um, you know, for the older versions of the hardware that rely on non-free firmware to boot. So, of course, we can't ask before we, before we run it, do you want non-free firmware? We can't even start an installer without it, but we should definitely make it clear in the description of the image what has been included, and once something has been installed, it should be easy to find that information too. So we can help people to learn about this. So currently we say like our official images are without firmware. If you happen to need it, you can like install it, but you're kinda on your own. And this comes with a lack of support kinda. And if we go include firmware in images, it kinda comes with an implicit promise on supporting that. I, I, I figure it kinda changes the equation over there. So my question here is, uh, how many regressions do we experience in firmware that actually affect users? And how do we do about that supporting? Because we can't just fix it. Uh, is there plans for like letting them downgrade easily? Or do you have any ideas on the support side of that picture? Sure. So Enrico, just behind you, I think, has an answer to that. Um, don't know if it's an uh, uh, um, I don't know if it's an answer, but um, uh, it, it it kind of ties together with giving feedback, uh, and there, and the feedback can include how much Debian can support it. So it even I mean, I personally would hate having to click enter once more to acknowledge a pop-up about non-free firmware that always shows up in 99% of the hardware I'll end up touching. Uh, but there could be a differently colored background or something uh, where if it's green, Debian will fully support running in your, machi running your machine. And if it's orange, then uh, <laughs> Debian is one of the components running in your machine and can only do what it can mm. by itself. And uh, the, the other bits in the bus network are outside Debian's control. So if you want something completely supported, you want a thing that is green, and uh, you work to get the Debian thing green. And Maybe, yes. So 
going back to Helmut's question, of course there is an option for people to downgrade these packages, just like any other package in Debian, but it's not something we can really support well or widely. I mean, there are known regressions that happen as you upgrade firmware. Um, if you upgrade your Intel microcode to fit to take on the workarounds for Spectre and Meltdown, for example, your performance can go through the floor. However, it's a security fix. Which do you want? And yeah, and okay, that's again, it, it's not a contrived example. It's one that does affect people every day. Um, but it's a it's a choice, and it's something you right. There's not there's very little we can do about it. Um, what we can do is point people at the support pages for that for those firmware blobs. I hope the packages already have the information included as part of the packaging anyway. It, if we don't, then that's an obvious improvement. Um, one of the things that we want to do, and again, there was some discussion on the mailing list about do we want to include the non-free firmware component if you've installed things, and absolutely we must do, because of course, once you've installed one of these blobs, you want to get security updates for it, just like any other package that you have. Um, so the default should be, we will always pull in newer versions. Yes. <clears throat> uh, so, looks like we've got several reasons for not uh, doing this uh, questioning and display in the Debian installer. Actually, the installer could get useless without uh, the firmware. Most people won't even see the installer because they will get their machines pre-installed. Uh, even if they did see this in the installer, they will probably forget it mm. like in a week. So maybe it's better to put this question into the message of the day or into the GNOME software banner or somewhere where it is constantly visible. And uh, it even could uh, provide some information about the security or uh, supportability status of your system. Yeah, definitely. We could add this, for example, add a message about this into the initial, you know, the, the first user startup with GNOME, we could put a, we could drop something onto the first user's desktop or whatever with a readme. You know, here is more information about your system. There's a whole bunch of things we can do here. We'll be looking for help to do whatever we think is best. Uh, I just got the idea. I think at the very end of the Debian installer, we say every, the installer has finished. Now we reboot the computer, and maybe we could put a message there. We installed your computer using non-free firmware just as an information and maybe some more words. Uh, that would be better than asking in the very beginning. Mm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I second that on having the post factum saying, okay, we've installed it with the non-free firmware and then write the information about this in something like a lib firmware Debian installer text mm. file with everything, links and everything. Then you can have it as a reference later and you can also have it in the standard file, uh, file format on the pre-installed uh, systems as well. So you can always say, yeah, just look at this file. It will tell you what non-free uh, firmware you're running now. That's it. Easy. Uh, yeah, cool, thanks. So I'm going to ask you to do something risky. And could I ask for a quick show of hands in the room? And I know this is not representative. Which of you here would like option one the most? That's conclusive. Who would like option two best? Equally, zero. Who would like option three? We, you know, make the non-free images official. We have a yeah, a reasonable number of hands. How about option four of just pull it all in? Okay. Option five. Should we do something else? Now, Jonathan, what else should we do? <laughs> <laughs> 
you know you're not going to get away without that. I've, I've mentioned this on a list. I've mentioned it in my talk last month in Germany on my DPL talk. I just like the idea of having uh, another ISO available that has only the non-free firmware installed. And on the download page, we make it clear that uh, this is the Debian image that meets all our um, um, all our criteria for what a free operating system should look like. And the second image is uh, one that you probably want to use if you have a laptop or a cell phone or a whatever. And then a user can easily make a decision on what ISO they want um, without it being too complicated for them and without too many hacks in installers or boot process or things like that. I think that's an easy fix. It doesn't need too many work before um, Bookworm is released. I think it's easily implementable. I think it fixes the vast majority of our problems that we have without having to compromise any of our values. So I think that's the best of these five options, in my opinion. But we'll fight it out in the GR, sure. so it's fine. Yes, in, in, the, in the least aggressive of ways, obviously. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mike, yes. I, th I believe Graham asked, isn't that option number three? Um, the, no, <laughs> the, 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 the images with the non-free um, images wouldn't be marked as official. They'd be next to the official images, and you can choose which one you want to download. Hmm. No, the, the first one is official. The second one is one with some crap on it that you can download if you want. But if we are advertising them directly side by side, I think the unofficial tag is, is kind of a joke. Th then maybe we should um, move away from that term because it's completely misleading to our users. Um, mm. We should make it a um, D Debian and Debian Plus non-free firmware or something more um, explicit because mm. if everyone has a different definition of what official means, then it means nothing. Yeah, agreed. So, Jeremy. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to mention, you, you mentioned it very briefly, but one example of these firmware packages we're talking about is the Intel microcode and the AMD64 microcode. Yeah. Um, and, that's, and that's security updates for the processors um, that's used by, by almost every system out there, even, even servers and things. So it's, it's not like we have some things that's just for laptops that if you're not a laptop, then you wouldn't use this at all. So. Yes, thank you. And that is a really important one. It's also one that actually straddles the divide um, because that is um, firmware, that, that is code that runs directly on your main CPU by definition. However, it is outside of the control of the OS, you know. It is part of the setup. Um, yeah. <coughs> Does the kernel provide an interface for querying all loaded firmware? I'm sorry, can you repeat that slightly louder? There's a fair bit of noise. Sorry. Uh, does the kernel provide an interface for querying all loaded firmware now, or will it do so? Ben is right behind you and can answer that. <laughs> no, but it does keep a list internally. It's just not, uh, it's not, just not visible. Hmm. Probably. So there was one other suggestion which I'll, I, I don't like, and I'll admit I haven't given much airtime to here. Oh, I wish people would stop making so much noise during a talk, um, which is to ship free images, but also have an extra piece of software that we can get everybody to run afterwards, which could tweak and add the firmware as well. I think that's a terrible idea because it's, a, it just, it's another step that makes it harder for a non-technical user to even start using Debian. So I, I'm not going to nix it, I'm not going to veto it, I just don't really don't like the idea. I'm sure somebody might speak up for it, but I can't see it getting much traction. Yeah, so please no, please no extra steps, but um, what I think we are lacking is some tool that is actually able to tell the user what's going on on their system. I have absolutely no idea which of my systems are using which firmware, and just having some utility that would print out a list would actually be very, very helpful. 
um, even just for this discussion or whatever. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. We're kind of running out of time, so last couple of couple of points. Uh, just on the point, on the same point, uh, if we are being hopeful and we are hoping that there are going to be free software firmware in the future, the same tool could allow you to change it. So mm -hmm. that that kind of thinking forward as well would be nice. Definitely. Um, of course, that's an important feature here. We, want, we, we don't just want to be documenting the bad things. We want to be helping to, to encourage people to develop and use better things. Since we are designing a new tool, I'll add the use case of checking um, if the firmware that is loaded matches what is on disk or if I need to somehow reboot the machine to, 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 to run the new firmware of something uh, like when you install a new kernel, but until you reboot, you don't get the security fixes. I don't know if the fir with the firmware we have the same problem. That's a good point. Yes, it's um, we should we should be able to do the same thing. Yeah, Jeremy, I think you'll have to be the last one. Hi, um, I'm I'm a bit concerned about having a scary warning about non fui firmware installed in the system. Um, because when people get scary warnings, then they want to try to fix the problem, and mm. I'm not so sure that there's a problem that needs to be fixed. Mm. It reminds me a bit of, of some Lintian warnings that may be, may be badly designed, and so some maintainers, um, not fully understanding the situation, yeah. try to fix all of those sure. and end up causing more problems to their yeah. system. Yes, totally. That's a good point. We're not trying to scare people. We're trying to inform people. The wording and the style of, what, of how we describe things really matters here. Um, oh, go on. One last one right at the back. Why does everybody sit right at the back? Is that the cool kids on the bus again? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, one experience I had being in lots of groups of newcomers to Debian, um, mostly notebooks nowadays don't have an Ethernet port, so people only rely on Wi-Fi. And when they go to download the image for installation, they always go to the net install. And that's a problem because if you don't include firmware and you do a net install, you can connect to internet and mm -hmm. then they get only a shell and it, they get a lot of problems. So maybe we can say there, oh, if you don't have an Ethernet port, please download the image with uh, an interface with GNOME, with KDE. So that could be an alternative, maybe? Sure. Thank you. So I, I declare we are about done. Thank you for coming along. This, uh, these have all been useful points. I know there's going to be a lot more. There will be a GR about this. Apologies. We, I know GRs are not something everybody likes. But this is genuinely a technical GR that match it that w that I think the project needs to make a, a proper decision about what we do going forwards. Um, let's ha let's have a useful discussion and a useful outcome. Like I said, you can probably tell where where my feelings lie, but I want to go with what the project wants. Regardless, I will implement or implement in my pieces of the of the solution whatever the project decides. I, I can promise that today. Um, thank you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.